It took me two years to create a persona that I could relate to. And looking back at my drafts, I focus so much on the colors and the shape language that I push away things that are actually meant to represent me, which led me to feel unsatisfied with the final result. So I would start over again and 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 again. You get the idea. If you often find yourself in the same loop, let me hold your hand. Come here, come here. I got you. I got you, Buki. Here are some tips that helped me. Step one, ask a friend. Aha! You thought I was going to say make a mood board, didn't you? Nay, nay. Whenever I talk to anyone about making a persona, they typically respond by saying, I don't know where to start. Which is fair. Starting is the hardest part, but do not let this stop you. As all the good writers say, you can edit a bad draft, but you can't edit a blank page. To start, I always suggest asking your close friends what they associate you with. It can be colors, objects, symbols, plants, or even other characters. By doing this, other people are giving you a basic outline of how they see you, whether it be your interests, the energy you give off, or specific things that are iconic to you. From here, you want to pick a general theme based on recurring motifs from this list, and then base your design on that. Now you make a mood board. This mood board should focus on the things you enjoy about the list that was provided to you. For an example, when I did this, my friends said that they associate me with casinos. So what is something specific that I like about casinos? I like car dealers. I love their outfits because I think buttoned up shirts, ties, and blazers are super sick. And I have always thought that car trips are really cool. So because of this, my theming would align more with the casino dealers than a slot machine or a security officer. Now, this makes it so that the general casino theme is now more specific to me, which makes it feel less like a character detached from me, but a character that represents me. Like maybe if you know that you want to draw yourself with big eyes, you might want to include a picture of, of Ochako from My Hero Academia, because she would have the same eye shape. In my opinion, a good tip is to try to limit yourself to less than 15 pictures because having more than this can possibly stress yourself out because you end up having too many options. After all this, I suggest starting the design. Take all the concepts from the mood board and create a base design of your character, head to toe. Try not to think too much about the design because as time goes on, you will build off of it. I'm gonna hold your hand when I say this. This design will not be perfect. Hell, your design might not be good at all. But with every good design comes terrible concept designs. Let yourself make mistakes, experiments with different aspects, change the species if you want. It will be okay. Step four, question mark? I don't know. Add small details. This is the revision stage, which in my case was the longest stage for me. This is where the real design process starts. Take this first draft and begin to tweak it to how you would style it. If someone gave you these clothes, if someone gave you this haircut, how would you wear it from the day-to-day -day life? I don't like wearing ties, so whenever I wear one, I usually put it around my shoulders. The same thing can be said about gloves and fabric on my forearm. The texture always makes me feel suffocated, so this part of the design does not read as me. So I changed it. That's what the stage is for, isn't it? You want to keep doing this over and over again until you end up liking your design. And, and I know that this can be hard, so if anything, you can send your design back to those friends from the beginning and ask for their advice and what they would change about the design to make it feel more like you. And my last and final tip of today, or step, I don't know, either way, just draw you. If you're at the end of this process and you're looking back at your design and you still feel like the character you have created does not feel like you, then there is always the option to draw yourself and amplify specific aspects. There are many YouTubers with iconic designs that are just them. 
Take Octo Inks, Lavender Town, Josa, or Jaden Animations. They all have very iconic designs despite them not following any of these tips. Instead of focusing on creating a brand new character, they look at who they are, what they wear, their favorite parts of themselves, and simplify all of that to make them the character. I did not go this route, so I can't give you as many tips as I would like. So I asked my good friends in Wonderland what they thought. Here are some answers. Jojosta and Dolly Doxon agreed that it is important to focus on the silhouette of the character rather than the details within it. And those who do not know, silhouettes are like the shadows of the characters. You can find these shadows by outlining the characters and coloring in the inside details. If you can see the parts of the design clearly, then you have a great silhouette. If the design seems murky and you can't tell what is where, try to amplify certain aspects. So if you want your persona to have animal ears, make them huge so that they'll stand out. If you have a character with big eyelashes, make them pop out of the head of the design, almost like those cosplayers who use paper as eyeliner. Do you know what I'm talking about? I think those are so cool. <laughs> There are so many things you could do to make a persona stand out, but above all, the most important thing to remember is probably the cheesiest piece of advice out there. Just have fun. I'm just taking a shot in the dark here, but I'm pretty sure you've been in a situation where you were in maybe a group project and you just had a terrible time. You never like the end result. So try to enjoy the process, try to make things easier for you so that you can feel accomplished and actually like your final persona. Don't take it too seriously. I know a lot of YouTubers stress the fact that you need to have a brand, but at the end of the day, you can always change things. You can change your persona, you can change your entire theming if you need to. You can change your username. Let yourself be free. Do what you want to do. It is important to not put yourself into a box. Instead, create that box. You dictate what is okay. You dictate what is part of your brand. Don't let what other people are doing, don't let what other people say change the way that you want to express yourself because at the end of the day, that will not make you happy. And I, I've always tried, of course it's a little hard, but I have tried to keep following this piece of advice and I think you should too. That's it. That's how I created my persona. Thank you so much for coming with me through this journey. As always, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, or suggestions for next week's video, please let me know down below. With that being said, stay safe, have a good day, and of course, don't die. Bye!